Welcome to the Best Business Podcast, the podcast for established marketers, entrepreneurs, and CEOs, the ones who want to join me in my mission to create 200 new multimillionaires who solve world problems with entrepreneurship. If that's you, then this podcast was created to give you access to the tools, training, strategies, and tactics you need to achieve multiple seven-figure profits as soon as possible. This world needs the best business you can build, so please get ready, open your mind, believe you can do this, and let's build a better world together for future generations. Why, hello everyone, welcome, Uh, thank you for joining us, my name is Daryl Urbanski as always, and today we have a very special guest for you. Today we are joined with Chris Goegan, and he is truly a master marketing mechanic. Uh, I have to admit he's one of the most impressive unknown marketers uh, I've met from the case studies that he's got, the results he's he's gotten his clients, uh, the fact that he's Canadian impresses me. <laughs> Canadians are such good people, so we connect on that. But also just with his uncanny and unselfish desire to help others. you It really comes through when you get to, to meet him, and it's really impressive um, just how, like even myself, just I've came here, I'm in southern San Diego, fellow Canadian, just really helping open doors and make the, the proper connections. And so it's been very, very powerful. And, and Chris... Um, we had to talk about this last time about how, you know, bandwidth and that we wish we could help more people and that sometimes what you see, it's just a small adjustment. It can really break through or in case I think it was your daughter's dance school and, you know, these different scenarios, um, you know, when you've got a skill that you've like, you just beaten on that craft so much that you really wish you could do more with it. So I hope today on our call that we kind of take up a challenge and see what we can do to really help listeners today break through anything that's holding them back and figure out the gaps in their marketing. Um, and the reason why I kind of pre-frame the call that way is because Chris, he's made over 100,000 cold calls, uh, <laughs> says hating all but three of them. He has uh, studied NLP, persuasion, how to influence others, negotiations, sales and marketing tactics. He's also an endurance athlete, uh, which is kind of a man after my own heart. He's completed uh, an Ironman. And if you don't know what an Ironman triathlon are, they are quite the feats indeed. In fact, I used to live in a small town. They had one every year. And it's on my bucket list. So Chris, you just you you impress me again and again and again. If you if you don't have no idea what an Ironman is, it's a two and a half mile swim, uh, 112 mile cycle bike ride, and then a marathon, a 26.2 mile run at the end. So and that's in like one day. So um, you know, obviously he's a man of of de- uh, determination and focus and the ability to to just chisel away at something, a craft, until you're just you're excellent at it. So. Uh, in business, over the last 20 years, he's put over $65 million in the pockets of small business owners. Um, he's taken a company from $6.8 million to $15.2 million in under a two and a half years. He's helped market multiple books and so helped sell over hundreds of thousands of copies. Um, and he works with everyone from struggling entrepreneurs to startups to very successful multi-million dollar companies, including uh, ones owned and founded by best-selling authors. Um, Chris... I really appreciate your time today. It's always a pleasure when we get together. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, well, thanks for having me here, Daryl. And it's always it's always funny, like listen to at the bios because it's like, it's like, gee, yeah, it's like I, I, I wonder who that guy is. I, I, I'd, I'd like to meet him, you know. It's, it's you know, <laughs> you, talk, you know, you, you can you, you can talk to my wife, and, you know, and, and she'll give you, you know, she'll give you a totally different bio. Yep. Yeah, but, yeah. No, I was just yeah, re- thank you for the I was just re- researching about that last night. It's called the imposter syndrome, and it's an interesting uh, thing that's come up where people who are really unskilled at something they tend to be ignorant of their level, and they think they are they rate themselves as more skilled than they are. And people who are really skilled at stuff they they overestimate others. If that makes sense. They assume if things are easy for them, it must be easy for everyone else, and so they they mm-hmm. tend to rate themselves lower and. So I know exactly what you mean because sometimes you hear your bio and you're like, "Wait, did I, I? I didn't accomplish all that. Did I really do all that?" And you know, and that's that's a good thing. I mean, just even the sense of having that "quote unquote" deja vu, it even just helps solidify the fact that you're really skilled at what you do. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, Chris, again, thank you for joining us. How did you even get involved in all this? I know your story a little bit, but can you just share it with some of our listeners? Kind of what got you? How did you get bitten by the marketing bug and and get involved in business? You know, I, I wish I could say, you know, it, it was a uh, pure intellect and, and genius that, you know, and a well-crafted plan that, that, that got me here, but, but it, it was, uh, uh, it was actually 
um, quite <laughs> quite the opposite. I, um, I I started off as as a, um, an engineer, and my degree is actually in, in uh, mechanical engineering. And I worked at manufacturing plants. worked at worked at that Ford Motor Company uh, initially in Canada. And, um, and 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 back back then, it's they're making big changes, and I had a ton of responsibility. And it was. It was like there's a uh, commercial on Long Title uh, Life Serial with uh, with Mikey, and it's like, you know, let's give it to Mikey. He'll try it. You know, he, he'll try anything. Um, <laughs> it, it, it was it was kind of you know if if you're you know under thirty, you know, you you, um, you, you might not let, like get that commercial, but um, if you're you know in your thirties or forties like me, um, then you, you probably remember it. Anyhow, um, back in my days as an engineer, that's kind of what my life was like. I got thrown into the worst areas of the plant. So okay, Chris, go make it better. Or by the way, you're going to get fired. So, 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 so there's my there's my motivation. No, no pressure. And, um, <laughs> no, no, no pressure at all. You know, and, and um, um, and so, so what, what it what it did, and I, and I had some great mentors, you know, along the line that really helped me out. But what it did is it really taught me to go in um, to an area, find the problems, prioritize the problems of the biggest, you know, the biggest problems that will give you the biggest returns. Prioritize them, find fixes, and then. Uh, uh, put put fixes, um, short term fixes to test, and then long term fixes in place, and having like dashboards to be able to uh, monitor and analyze things. And it also taught me, in addition to finding problems and problem solving, it also taught me strategy too. I really learned and honed uh, strategy because they would put me in a bad area. I'd, I'd turn around, fix it, uh, make, make it uh, make it good, and then they would take me and move me on to the uh, the next bad area, um, mm. and then. Uh, and also got like all new technology stuff that, that people were afraid of. So yeah, um, that's really I, I awesome. I just can sorry. I want to recap because I feel like you just yeah. covered some really powerful things there. So um, obviously it's, it was, sounds like you were, you, you kind of crafted your skills and trial by fire, being thrown in with the mm-hmm. wolves and you know sink or swim. But you, yep. you covered some important steps. So first you reported that you you dive into a department, you do a diagnostic figure out what was the problem, what had been what had been tried, what hadn't been tried. You would apply a couple of different solutions. And then you said that there was a dashboard, that you would set up a dashboard to report on the change. Um, mm-hmm. And that strategy, of course, was a part of it all. I might have had things out of sequence, but some of those key pieces, I feel, were just really like people might have just missed it and just heard it and like in one ear or the other. But I just feel that that's just in itself is just such an important like just a little loop that you said that you learned really fleshed out. Cause I think a lot of people, they might be developed in one or two of those areas, but they don't, they don't have like all those facets developed. Um, does that make sense? Is that, is that yeah. what you do every time you would have to dive in first? Would you know the problem when you came in or you would just know what the general symptoms were? You wouldn't necessarily know what the problem was and you would do research first. How would like, how does that process unfold? Yeah. So, so, so they, they would say, okay, correct. It's, um, uh, you know, we want you to go work in the uh, uh, in, in the cylinder block line, um, and the, the quality really sucks. Um, reject rates are, are are high, and um, go, go work with, uh, with with Herb, the engineer over there, smart smart guy. Go work with him and get things figured out. Um, and you know, and then we would have like some and have some data, you know, to look at. But it, it would always start off with just like a, a general um, overview of what the problem was. And then, and then I would have to just start peeling the layers back, you know, mm-hmm. finding out, okay, you know, where, where's the most expensive that where, where's, you know, where we're getting the, the, the worst efficiencies on. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and then understanding the, the part and how the part's made. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, understanding that, well, if you fix things upstream, it's going to help, you know, things out downstream. downstream. So downstream, right. you know, if the problems are showing up downstream, well, it's, it's a lot of times it's not, the downstream problem is if you fix things upstream, all the stuff you know down the road goes away. Right, right, um, right. That's it, a theory it, from a book. Isn't there a book called The Goal? Or was that Bottleneck Theory? Do you know what I'm talking about? Maybe I'm Yeah, yeah. The Goal by... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, was, I was actually one of, the, one of the first books that, that uh, um, I, I read many, many moons ago. Yeah. Awesome. It was yeah. Identifying Kirby. Yes. The, uh, the, the, yeah, the Bottleneck. Um, so... I, I, yeah, and so so like, what that whole process did is that you know I, 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 it's one of the you know biggest things you know I, I do with clients these days is you know just go in and like you know they'll tell me what the problem is and then I just start peeling layers away mm-hmm. you know and to you know, to find you know like all the problems and then usually from all the problems and this is you know I I realized this you know twenty twenty six 
twenty seven years ago as an engineer, it's like that. You know, um, you have all these problems, but you've really got you know three or four are are the really big problems. Right. And, and what you do is you prioritize those and and work on those first, and then you and then you keep going down the uh, you can solve those, lock those down, mm-hmm. and then you you know you go down the list uh, you know until you're, you're you're at a happy point. So, um, and, and and the other thing in my days as an engineer is you know talking. So it's like you know I get the things you know humming in the uh, you know on, on the cylinder block, and then they would move me over to you know, like the crankshaft or you know pistons, or, you know just from one area to the other area. So what what it really taught me is that you know what, the principles are all the same um, of, of making parts, even though the you know the, the different steps are completely different. The process is the same. It's the exact same principles. Mm-hmm. So it didn't matter. Um, you know, when I moved from Canada to California and I was, I was working on like uh, manufact- designing and manufacturing of bearings and things, you know, going like, you know, space station programs, like for October submarines, bicycles, et cetera. It's like it, it didn't matter that it was a completely different part than, than engine parts. The process and the steps, um, the, uh, the principles were exactly the same. Of, so making a widget, so I, I replaced the product with like a widget in the thought process exactly the same, which is very similar to marketing. It's like it doesn't matter which right. marketing is, but the principles like, right. like you know remain the same for all of them. Right, right, so. right. Got it. Yep. Sorry, keep going. I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to encourage you on your path. That's right. That that there's usually if you feel really frustrated, you feel like you have twenty problems. When you look at it, you actually only have two to maybe five problems. You don't really have twenty. Um, and usually the problems aren't at the place where you're looking for them. You know, like, like, like when I was uh, uh, training for, for Ironman, um, I, 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 uh, I was having had serious knee problems, you know, at, at a point where, and I never had knee, knee issues or anything like that. I've been very fortunate there. But I was, I was having, you know, about a level nine on a scale of one to 10 pain. And so, you know, I'm like considering pulling out of, of the Ironman. Yeah, not- um, no, and, you know, especially like my motivating reason for doing it was I would lost my dad to cancer and, I was doing it to uh, to raise money for cancer awareness and, and fighting cancer. Right. And so, you know, you raised like, like, oh. raise some good money for that too. You raised like $8,000, $10,000. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, it was a really good pro- uh, program, a uh, team in training. I'll, I'll give a plug for them. The, the team and lymphoma society, a wonderful program. They gave us a coach that, 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 you know, coached us and he put together a, uh, you know, Excel spreadsheet says, okay, here's the program. Do the workout. Forget about whether you think you can do this or not. It doesn't matter. Do this <laughs> today. Just look at your workout today. Do that. And if you do that every single day, I guarantee you, you're, you're going to do it. He goes, I've done it myself. I've helped hundreds of people do it. Um, it's, and this guy was like, you know, in the early 60s. And he's just like, all right, you know, you know, former, uh, you know, former Marine. It's like, all right, I, I believe you. Um, so, you know, so just like focus on, on just, you know, the, the small steps. And, you know, the big steps happen. Um, but anyhow, back to the point with like, I had this pain in my knee and I was considering pulling out of it um, because it was just, it was painful, you know, to like ride for eight hours and with this like incredible pain. Right. And, and then, um, so, uh, uh, someone on my, my team, uh, my Ironman team, we went to this, uh, a trigger point therapy clinic. And what it is, is, is these, um, there's these four, they have four molars, but these trigger point things are like, uh, they're like your own personal, um, uh, uh, pain person. Like, so okay. it's like these really, these rollers that get really deep in the muscles. And okay. well, what, what turned out was I had, I, I had a, a trigger point, which is the, the your muscle starts bawling, mm-hmm. um, like, like tightening up. So I, I had a, a ball about the size of a tennis ball in my thigh. Whoa. And I just started rolling that, working on that. And after like two, three weeks, it finally loosened up. And I felt like I was giving birth. Um, and I mean, it hurt and it, 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 I was like in tears and it felt so good all at the same time. And, um, my wife will laugh at me when I say that she's like, you have no idea what it's like to give birth. It's like, well, I'm a guy, I don't, you're right. But, but it's, it's like humor me. All right. right. So, so, you know, and, and, and so, so like I, I got on that, that, that trigger point and then my, my knee pain, it, it released, you know, and, and it went away. So it wasn't, if I focused on the knee, I, it, it wouldn't have been fixed. You know the problem was what was somewhere else, and same thing too. It's like I'll get like ankle pains, and I know that I've got trigger points in my, in my uh, calves, so I, I roll those out. My my ankle pain goes away right away. So you know, with you know, mm. kind of like kind of bow back on the story back in my days as an engineer, and you know, my my current days in marketing. Yep. You know, it's like 
where, where people are experiencing the pain is usually not the source of the pain. It's, it's usually somewhere else. Right, 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 right. And was it in prescription without diagnos- diagnostic is malpractice. That's uh, <laughs> something that we picked up. So without prescribe, without diagno- uh, diag- uh, diag- diagnosing it, diagnostic, doing a diagnostic. I don't know why I'm fumbling with words today, but that's why that's so important, which is why when you went through, you just ran through the steps. You're like, yeah, we used to do this, 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 and this, and you ran through it. But I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. For a lot of our listeners, that might, like there's some key things, like the, the concept for me of like a business dashboard. It was phenomenal. Like I remember that was like the holy grail when I was like, oh, like the heavens opened up. I was like, I get it. Oh, my God. Um, and so, but I, can you maybe even talk about that a little bit? I mean, so first you have to dive deep and the problem is often not what the problem, what you think it is. And then once you identify the problem, what would you do then? You come up with just some solutions, some alternatives. You would, you would, you would list the, you, you already said it, you'd list all the possible causes or possible problems. You try to identify yep. the, the greatest ROI for your time invested. And then yep. once you knew those, you would apply your solution and how would you set up reporting? How did that, how would that work? So, so with regards to, to fixing the problem and, and the reporting, sometimes it's like um, we couldn't do a permanent fix. So, like sometimes it's just a temporary fix. So we want to see if if, if we made this fix, if it would actually work. Um, and so we'd put a temporary fix in place and, and then collect the data on it and and, and make sure it, it gave us the you know the return that, that we wanted before investing you know money in, into you know new machinery, new equipment, new systems, new right. you know, new stuff. Right. Um, you know, same thing in marketing. It's just like you know, you don't want to invest unnecessary money if you know if, if you don't have to. Right. Um, right. Yep. Well, I'm with you. you know, so so yeah. So you want you want to be wise about it, and then and then then having because like in a lot of times, um, you know, both my days as an engineer and in marketing, it's like the the data doesn't exist. It would be easy to collect the data, but the data doesn't exist. Mm. So so it became a matter of, all right, let's start measuring these, you know, these characteristics. So say if it was, uh, engineering, it was you know, a hole that was in a, uh, that we want to put in, in a, in a cylinder block is measuring, make sure we had the hole, the right size mm-hmm. in the right position every time and collecting that data and watching that data and running stats on that, on that data. And could not be any, like anything like incredibly like extreme analysis or no. like you just start, you just start watching. You start watching the data, and you start seeing trends and things like that. And you, see, you see patterns develop, and you know, and, and then you you find you know you find the solutions you know for um, for things. And, and the numbers the numbers start telling you things. And everyone's business has got numbers, and the numbers are screaming and telling something. Mm-hmm. You know, the problem is that most business owners are so busy being successful that they don't have time to uh, to to like a know what to look for, or b you know don't have time to, to actually actually you know do do the looking and, right. uh, and monitoring yeah. so but it's yeah it's definitely important to have that that dashboard monitoring you know the, the, the key elements oh definitely uh one of my mentors said that what you can't measure you can't manage and if you can't if you can't measure it you can't manage it and if you can't manage it you can't grow it and that's again that's where when i first heard about the business dashboard it was like the heavens opened up and i was like oh my god it's like a it's like a car dash for your business how much fuel do we have in the tank how fast are we going how am i is my engine light on like you know just it was it was just this huge aha and i'm i'm not even going to try to profess to be like i've mastered it by any means yet but um no i just think that that's that's a really really powerful insight um, and again, for, for, for you, maybe myself, you know, as mechanics, as I say that all the time, there's no plumber in the sky that determines or accountant in the, the sky that determines how much money your business will or will, won't make. You know, it's, it's like plumbing. It really is. It's like a mechanic system. It's, it's like you said, regardless of industry, you can plug and play pieces in there. It's, you know, it's traffic with conversion mechanisms and end results and, you know, decision diamonds. You know, if you have a, somebody calls in, they've got, you know, three options. They can hang up, they can book an appointment or they can, you know, not book an appointment type thing, you know, and so it's just, it's, anyway, it's just really boiling it down to that core essence of what you got and just building the pipeline out. So that's, that's really, really, really helpful. Did we miss anything? Did we, I just got so excited about some little details, but did we miss anything there? I think we kind of 
went through it from diagnosing the problem to listing and prioritizing the possible solutions, uh, applying a temporary solution first before you go and, you know, drop your bank on it. And even if it isn't a problem, even if it's a problem that doesn't exist, like a new marketing campaign or a new product that you're trying to launch or something like that, that's, mm -hmm. that's yeah, apply a temporary solution, get some data, some results first before you make it permanent, and then set up some sort of measuring and reporting on the performance of it. Uh, moving forward, that way you know if you have a better solution or you know if you need to go back and fix it. And even just by measuring it on its own, like is known to prove, improve the metrics. Just just by tracking and measuring, things improve, right? So Exactly, exactly. You, you, you know, and, and also want to like breathe some encouragement into people too because like a lot of times with like business owners, they're all or nothing personalities. Mm. So it's like we have no reporting or we have no dashboard or our dashboard sucks. Um, we need to like, we need to put a dashboard in and they, they look for, okay, let's get the best dashboard. And then they start like, we want to pull in every single stat. It's like, you know, it doesn't really have to be like that. In fact, like usually it depends on, on the personality and, and the situation. Um, a lot of times what's way more effective is, you know what, let's just start off simple. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's no dashboard, but let's, let's look at how many, you know, Let's, let's look at analytics and, you know, how many people are hitting a site. And then let's look at, let's, let's go into Infusionsoft or whatever system you're using. Let's look at how many people are opting in. Um, just, you know, simple, simple high-level stats. Mm -hmm. um, and instead of doing that on every product, let's just look at, you know, like, like you know, the, the one or two top producing ones or the, the one or two new ones that you're working on. And just look at that put, because it's easy to, to do that, to implement that mm -hmm. and look at it you know, like weekly. Um, it's easy to do that. And then, and then you start getting the habit. The stuff gets done. Whereas like, right. people that want to do everything, yep. it becomes like a six month, six month ordeal. And then it's just, it gets like, you know, pushed to the side and nothing gets done because it's got to be perfect or they're not going to do it. Right. And the other part that I like is that it's called, it's called habit stacking and it's actually a really powerful way to be successful with something. And that's just develop a baseline. So if you brush your teeth every morning and that's a habit that you've got down pat, you can habit mm -hmm. stack. If you will need to remember to take a pill every morning, if you need to remember to do five push ups every morning, you stack it on your toothbrushing habit. So every time you go brush your tooth, you're also supposed to do something else with it. And so that's why I like is that you just said, you know, you break it off small, keep it simple first. At least you're, you know, if you can't measure five things, measure one and at least get yep. the measurement and the reporting down. And then once you get that, then you can start measuring two and then you can start measuring three or you figure out that maybe the one's the only one that you really need. So, um, yep. Yeah, the biggest thing is just get momentum and get moving. Yep. So, Chris, what were some of the things that the challenges that you had to overcome in your career in solving some of these problems? I mean, doubling or over doubling a company's revenues. You know, I've done that, and I know that there's a lot of learning that goes into those scenarios. And um, yeah, just yeah, what was it? What was it? What if anything was holding you back, and how did you overcome it? Yeah. So, so um, a, a big thing. I'd say the biggest thing. Um, biggest challenge that, that I've had um, it has, has been coming to terms with a false belief of the, uh, of the uh, self-made man. Um, I, I um, a, as an engineer, you get really um, like data and numbers and strategy and engineering is a huge thing and understanding how things work, mm -hmm. being able to take things apart, tinker with them and put them back together again. Mm -hmm. You start, you start getting like, a lot of skills and a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in your ability to do things, which, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's completely fantastic. And then when I left engineering, I, I went into, uh, um, sales mm -hmm. and, and commission only sales and was, was really bad at it at first and then, and then got really good at it and built sales teams and stuff. Um, with sales, it's, you know, numbers and knowing why people buy. Mm -hmm. Um, knowing, you know, the emotional and, and psychological reasons of why people buy and, you know, um, you know, the values that, you know, that, that they use to, to make their decisions off of. So, so when, when you can com combine those two things of, you know, data and numbers and understanding how things work, being able to take things apart and knowing why people buy, mm -hmm. um, you start, you can start getting a, uh, a false sense of self, mm -hmm. <laughs> excuse me. And, um, and, and you can start developing some uh, 
Now, um, for me, it's sort of developing some um, ego um, problems okay. where where I thought, you know, I, I had a license to print money. Because um, mm. it's like when, when you can look at a problem, dissect it, figure out, you know, um, what's wrong with it, and then when you know how to, like, take something, re-engineer it, and sell it to, to somebody, mm-hmm. it's just like, you know, I, I can go anywhere and do anything, and you know, right. I can you make anything. Pick, pick an industry, and away you go, right. I, yeah, yeah. I know, I know yeah. the arrogance you speak of. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, and 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 I and so you know, I said you know the, the the biggest challenge for me to overcome was coming to terms with the false belief of the self-made man. So so like you know, I always heard and was always told you know like you know if it's going to be, it's up to me. You know, and you know, and and be the guy, the man, the leader. Make things, be the guy that that makes things happen. Make it happen. You know, be amazing. Do something. Do something great. Um, so I'm thinking, all right, well, it's, if it's going to be, it's up to me. I just need to like you know do stuff, mm-hmm. get stuff, apply these skills. And I, I'm going to be a smashing success at everywhere. Um, and um, what, what, what happened is, um, with that being my, my view, you know, I, you know, I, I tried and tried, and I had no problems out working with a lot of people. Um, I always, you know, tell people like in hockey, one of my favorite places. I'm not a big guy. Um, one of my favorite places to play in hockey was is in the corners and the boards because I could go in there mm-hmm. and I could, I could muck it up and outwork you know guys you know like almost twice as big as you know than me yep. and come out with a pocket you know and and uh, make some good things happen. So um, so I had successes and failures all along the way, but but what happened was um, um, life kind of um, <laughs> life kind of life kind of came at me um, where. Where life itself, you know, or, or, or God, like, changed things and, and, and showed me that just because I've got those skills, it doesn't mean that, that I'm going to be successful. Mm-hmm. Um, that there, there, there are other factors, you, you know, mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. And, and the whole, if it's going to be, it's up to me. And I, and I try to, like, you know, make myself, you know, like, I thought, you know, I was destined to be one of these big internet marketing guru guys. And I started down that path and, you know, because I, I had wisdom and, People who I just you know, kind of coach, you know, um, mm, just just to help them out. Yep. They, yeah, you know, they they had they had great success, and they're like, oh my gosh, I've been through Brian Tracy's programs, and I've been through this guy's programs, I've been through, you know, Zig Ziglar, and I've been through like all these, you know, all these programs, and yours was like yours. The stuff that you said, it hit home. Oh my gosh, it's like I made, you know, I from the cup of coffee we had, I took that thing, I went home, I implemented, it, and I closed, you know, and I got a twenty thousand dollar deal that that I never would have had without yep. that. Yep. Oh my gosh, you know, and so it's like it's like you should be, you need to be an internet marketing guru guy. Right. So so. You know, and, and so I started like fashioning myself off off of how these internet internet marketing guru guys, you know, how I perceived them to be in my mind, whether they were actually that or not, I have no idea. But it it it, it really it wasn't me, you know, and it, it wasn't like I was I was trying to be someone who I wasn't meant to be, because mm-hmm. um, not like my nature is to connect with other people, um, get wisdom you know from other people, formulate it. With, with my own wisdom and experiences, you know, and put it all together. Um, I can, I consider myself, I'm not, you know, like mo- the, the smartest guy in the world. And so, you know, I, I, I can look at, you know, um, some of the failures I had and quickly realize that I'm not, I'm not the <laughs> smartest guy. Um, you, know, you know, but it's like, I consider myself, you know, I'm a, I'm a good student, a good learner, and, you know, I'm a good implementer and, and tester and really good at, at observing and, you know, collecting and analyzing, you know, the data. On, on things and mm-hmm. you know and so it's like you know I, I had to come to terms that for me it's not about personal greatness it's just about helping and serving other people it's not about listening to my gut and jumping off a cliff and going for the big win and doing it all on my own it's about you know doing it slowly with wisdom and building a sound business over time it's not a you know a, a bam kabam wow marketing mm-hmm. guy like you know, that's that's not me, and you know, which is that's heavily propagated on, on the internet today. You know, right. it's like you know, I, I had to learn really yeah. like, like who I am and build my business um, on that, as opposed to you know trying to be like you know like, like you know a big marketing guru guy and achieve you know fame, success, and, and fortune. You know, um, so so that 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 was you know my my, my personal greatest uh, 
um, challenge. Got it. Got it. No, and I love what you say about building like a real business and it's not this splash in and, you know, come in and go. You you can do that. When you know how to do this as a marketer, you know, you can see opportunities and you can jump in and make some money and, and, and leave, but there's no business to that. You know, it's like, it's like a, it's like a crazy weekend. You're like, wow, that was awesome. It was amazing. Can't believe it did that. And now it's Monday morning again and you got to like, Right. What am I going to do for the week now? Um, and that, you know, and that's, and that's to, you know, and I say that because there are ethical people who do that, that marketers that yep. just jump and go. And it's not, I mean, there's a bit of the persona that they just go in, they suck out all the money, they leave. I mean, there's good people that do that and they, you know, they make money selling a good product and that's fine, but they don't have longevity and there's no, um, there's no stability to that, right? Like you said, if you want to build a business, it's even that was one of the things Warren Buffett said, you know, he looked for a business that was on a hill surrounded by a moat. You know, and it was because he didn't want this, he didn't want this noble, like agile thing that would do double backflip somersault. Like he just wanted something that made money every year for the last 50 years and doesn't look like it's changing anytime soon. You know what I mean? And just get in on that at a good price. Um, so, and that's yeah, just, it, yeah. It, 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 you know, and, and also too, Daryl, it's, you know, that's an excellent point. Uh, and I, I love that visual, you know, Warren Buffett having that. You know, a, a castle or a house on the hill with a moat around it. Right. Um, um, you know, it, it's it's all, like there's no there's no right or wrong. It's it's only what, what's what's right or wrong for you know for, for for me, for you, for your business, for you know you know the, the, the guy or gal listening to this. It's not you know if if they like doing you know get in and like see an opportunity, capitalize on it, be out you know in and out short term mm-hmm. gain. Mm-hmm. You know, like God bless them. That's 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 great. Do that. You know, like just it's just it's just different. It's just like don't try to be. You know, like for me, it wasn't. It's just don't try to be someone I'm not. And for me, it's like it's about building a business. You know, not not short term success or, or or flash or flare. Mm, got it. So, what would you recommend to people who are starting out or struggling? When we talk about it's about building a business and something that's you know that's we talk about it's a long term game. Okay, that's great. But what do I do today? What do I do now? I'm struggling. I'm getting started out. Uh, you know, obviously I have frustrations. I need money in the door. I need systems and processes because I do everything myself. Uh, you know, that's probably a lot of people. And and I think honestly, I think that almost describes as kind of something that we just go through different iterations of over and over again. But what would you recommend? Yeah, good question. Really good question. Um, I you know I recommend get help. You know, don't do it on your own. Don't try to be someone you're not. You know, be wise. Don't dive off the cliff. Um, you know, mm-hmm. take risks, but calculate risks on things. You know, uh, and 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 just like um, I can't stress enough, like 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 the value of uh, of, of wisdom, mm-hmm. um, because you know it's I heard someone say it's like there's two types of wisdom, that, like like um, you the wisdom that you get from from like trying and failing on your own, or other people's wisdoms who 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 have like you know, you know, tried and failed and, you know, and, and figured things out in the areas that you're looking at. Right. Um, you know, and, and so that, that's like, because, um, I know a lot of people who own businesses, they've got an incredible work ethic, you know, you know, on things. And so like with me, like what I, what I used to do was like something didn't work. I'd become stressed. Um, and then I'd feel miserable. So then I would try harder and then I, I would, I would like see some like, or read some book or read some article, you know, about some guru guy or some, some expert. And, and then I would implement that and I would try harder. And the more I tried, the more it did work. Um, <laughs> and because I was just focused on just, just tactics, tack going from tactic to tactic. And, you know, when I, I, you know, and then when I hit a point where I just got tired, I just physically was just exhausted, mentally and emotionally exhausted. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I had to find, you know, truth about you know, my position in the market and unplug from everything. And, talk with my wife and, and I've got a, uh, I've now got a board of directors, you know, who I bounce every project off of, um, and I talk with my wife and board and, you know, guy who's just been like a wonderful blessing. Uh, you call him like he's been coaching me or mentoring me or discipling me or whatever word you want to use, but he's, he was a real godsend. Um, and to start just, just gaining wisdom and just, just like thinking more deeply on, on issues and just, just not, you know, not buying it, you know, everything online because it, it looked and felt good, mm. but, but, you know, gaining wisdom, gaining perspective, um, you know, and then developing like, like a, uh, you know, a plan that I had confidence in, you know, and taking action, you know, on, on that. So people that, that are, that are struggling, 
I can't encourage them enough to, to gain perspective, um, you know, whether it's paid or, or, or you know, or, or from someone like, like close to them, um, right. who's got wisdom, who's got wisdom, um, that, that's so valuable. You know, like, like, like there's all sorts of situations, you know, where, um, because the solution situations de- depends on, you know, on, on where they are. It's like, like, for instance, like, you know, I, I like, company I'm, I'm working with, they're, you know, about doing about two and a half million dollars a year in sales. And their goal was five years to double their business, get, you know, get to 5 million. Well, we put together a, a plan and a strategy where first year we, you know, we added about, um, help them get 40% increase in business or, you know, about a, add about a million dollars in revenue. Um, contrast that to uh, another company you know, with who is, you know, they're, they're frustrated and they're frustrated and struggling. They're a $20 million company identified, you know, one of the divisions that was doing three and a half million. And, um, the, 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 the strategy for them was not to, you know, to add, you know, like, you know, 40% increase, you know, it, but it was to, to take them from, you know, three, you know, three, three and a half million to 30 million, um, because the opportunity is there, but much mm-hmm. different strategy. Um, and, and contrast that to, um, a, uh, um, uh, a coach, um, that uh, I work with who, helps train Olympic athletes and, um, you know, helping their business go from, from like, I need some cat business is really good, you know, but you know, I, I want some initial, some more cash flow right now and some longer term, um, some changes. Mm-hmm. So all, you know, all three of them, I could go on and on, you know, from hundreds of clients work with, I go on and on about all different situations, but no two situations have been identical, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, so it's like, how can you go online Read, you know, get some course, um, and and know and and know what what's right for you. Now, I understand there's there's times where it's like yeah, I just need to know how to get traffic, so let me buy a Facebook class or something like that, mm-hmm. or you know I need to run to know how to build a funnel or develop webinars. That's you know that's fine, different situation. But if you're struggling with something and it's not working, gaining wisdom and perspective is is, is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm I'm wholly on board. You do better when you know better, and. Um, it's funny because what you talk about, you mentioned Olympic athletes. Again, I've been fortunate enough I've, when I was in martial arts, I got to train. I myself didn't compete at the world championships or anything, but I got to train with a lot of a lot of guys who did go on to win the world championships, and a couple of guys have gone to the Olympics for judo. And um, one of the things is is like when we just what it takes. Like when you say about getting getting perspective that's one of the things they call it controller and android and so basically what these guys would do if you know you're going to go compete at the world championships or the olympics first thing you do is you work with your coaches you get a couple of coaches and you you and your coach you have obviously have a main coach and the other coaches and you go and you look at who all your competitors are and you analyze yourself and you analyze people you you who you think are your highest competition because if they're any real competition they're not going to come out of nowhere i know that's like the you know the the that's the the uh, the, what is it? The Karate Kid story, right? You come out of nowhere and you go and you win, and that kind of happens. But for the most part, most of the you know the competitors, they're they're on the map. So you take a look at everyone, and then you get your panel of coaches to come up with a strategy for you, a training plan, and a game plan on tournament day. And when everybody signs off on it, you just go into Android mode and you just drill it. You just implement it. No more doubts, no more fears, no more what if, what if I could change that, maybe this is better. You just drill that and get your 10,000 reps in and you just go. And then when you show up, you know, the goal is that your plan was better than their plan and that you just stuck to it and implemented. Just like you said about the triathlon, you had a coach, he made a plan and he just said, just, just wake up every day, just take the next step. Just wake up every day and just take the next step. Don't worry about how you're feeling. It's funny because I'm reading this book. It's called The Chimp Paradox. And it talks, uh-huh. talks about the how there's, you know, you have three brains. There's your human brain, which is the logical, rational self. Your chimp, who's the emotional, uh, larger part of yourself. And then you've got the computer, which is like breathing. You don't even think about it. And just, you know, and just, just ignore the chimp. Ignore the emotion side. Forget how you feel about it. Just get up and just do it. Mm-hmm. you'll be amazed and anyway so what you're it's great it's great advice if you're struggling you know this is something else i think is really powerful to articulate excuse me and that's 
like even the people listening to this right now, this is a magical thing. The fact that you can hear my voice right now, you know, and that it, a one, it's not live, and b the fact that wherever you are in the world, that my message, this voice, this interview with Chris and I, us downloading our brain to this audio recording, is being able to be sent to you. Back in the day, when someone had a problem, the only way they could find a solution was ask their friends and family, any educational, prof- like any other professors that they had around them, or go to the library. Like that was it. You know, like you had your knowledge and experience. You had the knowledge and experience of people around you you could ask, and then you had the library. But now we're able to tap into world-class experts. And so if you're struggling, if there's anything, anything at all that is a problem for you and your business, I guarantee someone has solved that problem or one extremely similar to it. So there should be no more questions of how do I do anything. It's all out there, you know, and just write the check for the coaching if you need it or the course if you need it or spend the hours searching and sifting through, you know, internet searches and files and go to the library. But there should be no no reason why you don't know what you need to do even calls like this so that's awesome and then i guess the next step that we've kind of alluded to here is that when you've got your coaches and you've got your plan to stick to it and follow it and invest everything you have in executing that because um well that's why you hired your coaches to begin with right yep yeah that's awesome that's really awesome so chris is that the best advice you ever got um, actually, the best advice I ever got is, is to, uh, to listen to my wife, um, <laughs> to, to, to lend a keen ear to my wife. Uh, it's, it's like, it's funny, but because it, it's, uh, my personality, it's like, I um, mean, you, you hear that saying, there's, you know, people who see the cup as half full, there's others who see it as half empty. Um, well, like I, I see the cup as, you know, as half full, yeah, you know, like I see problems and opportunities and it's mm-hmm. like, man, okay. Wow, look, look, look what we can make this thing become. And so I, I, I'm very good at seeing the upside on stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I said there's two types of people. You know, those cup are half empty, those half full. Well, there's actually a third type, and that's my wife. My wife is cup. I don't see any cup. Show me the cup. <laughs> um, and, and and so we butt heads. We butted heads for a long time because I would, you know, I, I would bring something up to her and it'd be like, you know what, you're just negative. She would shoot it down like right away. And so I wouldn't listen to her and I'd just go off and like, you know, um, go off of, you know, my own brilliance and intelligence and wisdom and how smart I was, you know, analyzing things and people and situations. Um, Mm -hmm. but I really didn't, I really didn't like understand that, um, how she looks at things is just a real, um, benefit for me. It's Mm -hmm. like such a huge advantage because she sees things in a way that I can't and she's got skills that, that, that I don't have, but she's not a marketing person. She's my wife and she, you know, she loves me and cares about me and, and wants the best for me. So she's not going to give me, <laughs> I, I took it, right. the, all the advice she gave me as negative, you know, and so I took it as negative, but it's like, it's like, she's right. well, if, if I, if I actually was smart, I would have thought about it. It's like, you know, gee, does she, does she hate me or does she love me? No, no, she loves me. Does she want, does she want me to fail in business? Well, of course not, because it's like, you know, if she gets dragged along, whether it's success or failure, you know, it's like, right. would she want, rather live in, in poverty or, 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 or live in all, much right. well off, <laughs> you know? So, so I, I had to learn to lend a key near to, to my wife. And actually, if I, looking back on it, had I done that, um, there was, uh, some, some business situations where I wouldn't have gotten involved in yeah. and it would have saved me like, like a lot of pain. Now, you know, I bounce everything like off of her, and I said, and I, I've got a board, you know, so where, where I bounce things off of. So mm-hmm. I'm able to uh, to take myself out of the picture and and be much more wise about things. And I think that that's a really powerful point. Again, we've covered some awesome things on this call. People may want to consider uh, listening to it a couple of times just to make sure that they get it, because. What like for you? It's your wife, and that's fine. But you mentioned that you've got a board of directors, so you're not mm-hmm. the only one making decision. You mentioned yep. that you also take your wife's point of view, and it's a drastically different point of view than you yourself. In fact, she's not even coming from the same perspective, and that is just one of the most powerful things because our brains we are hardwired to take like snap judgments and you know go from our gut. And sure, there's there's valid uh, there's valid reasons for it and why we can trust it if it's our if it's within our expertise but there's also just the common knowledge and that you can be too close to a top to a subject um I just, it's so it's so powerful just to find another outside opinion that goes back to even the imposter syndrome i mentioned at the beginning of the call where they notice that people tend to rate themselves like when you're when you're too full of yourself that's when was that saying nothing fails like success 
right? Because you mm. just get ahead of yourself, and then you're just, you know, you've, you've kind of gone with the wind, quote unquote. Where you, exactly what we said before? Hey, I'm unbeatable. I've generated these millions of dollars, and I know, I know the formulas, and you know, you do this, do that, and everything just works. And it's not necessarily always that way. It definitely helps, but um, I just think that there's really solid principles, and the reason why I've been stopping to, to shine light on these Chris just so also our viewers or listeners understand is that habits are really 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 important in fact most of your success is based on the habits you have or don't have are you educating yourself obviously you are because you're listening to this do you take yep. that education and apply it to action you know are you constantly doing outreach and expanding your network are you trying new things are you are you you know, experimenting are you looking for uh, answers outside of the box like are you are you thinking laterally you know are you seeing something someone's doing in a different industry and testing if it could work for you in your industry and maybe revolutionize it so there's just a lot of key things here that I just mentioned again just from the beginning the diagnostic procedure to making a list and prioritizing if possible solutions applying a temporary solution and getting some data before you jump all in creating a dashboard to t- monitor to measure and track results having a panel of experts to not be the one man show to seek out guidance if you're lost and concerned to to get to to look for to seek out and to enjoy differences in opinions because i know myself if you've just you know have a bunch of people that are drinking your Kool-Aid and they can even have your best interest at heart but if they just agree with everything that you know they don't want to let you down right that that can be one of the hardest things to get is an objective point of view an objective perspective, someone that's not, you know, that isn't afraid to, to, to challenge you or question you or see it a different way. Um, mm-hmm. Really, 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 really powerful. I mean, that's something, that's why there aren't more successes. I mean, even the best marketers in the world, you know, they, we still have failures because you can't, if it were that easy, there would be more multimillionaires and billionaires, but it's not, you know, and there's just a lot at play. So, um, Anyway, so the habits and the, 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 the foundation you build is super, super, super important. Chris, are there any other habits that you feel that have really helped lead you on your path to success? Well, I, I think, um, Daryl, I think the ones that, that, that you um, just laid out, like th- those are, you know, are pretty much all of them. They're studying, learning, um, ha- having discipline to, mm-hmm. to um, you know, being uh, disciplined to, to, to do things on a, on a regular basis, whether I feel like it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, side note, like with Iron Man, like talk to people, it's like, Oh my gosh, that's so impressive. Wow. I wish I could do that. I think it's like some amazing thing. It's like, you know, really it wasn't. It's like, um, you know, my wife came out, met our Iron Man team and she was like, these, these people are doing Iron Man. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's like, Oh, it's some of them, you know, look like they should be a weight watchers or something. Like yep, that. Like, yep, yep. Uh, you know, it, it's like like all it is, is is just being disciplined to to do to do the daily activity, you know, and a lot of daily activity is boring, um, you, you know, and just doing stuff whether you feel like it or not. Yep. Um, and then eight months later, you know, here I was completing an Ironman, you know, yep. pain free, injury free, and so it's like anybody can do an Ironman, anyone can do things, but it's just a matter of just having the right discipline. So yep. you know, the, you know, the key things, you know, studying, learning, you know, discipline prioritizing what to work on and then working on things and then analyzing your, your results. Yep. Yep. Yeah. The, the yeah. problem, the, the, the problem with, with this, so Daryl, here's, here's the biggest problem with this. One word with, with this boring. This yes. stuff is boring. You know, like, like people is like, Oh my gosh, she did Iron Man. It's like, I want to do one, you know, and they want to be ready in a week. You know, it's like, or, you know, it's, it's like, Wow, Daryl, you help guys build seven figure funnels. Oh my gosh. I want to do that and I want to do that this week. I don't have a product. I don't have any skill sets. I I haven't done anything in the last ten years to, to, to really like, you know, give myself so I've got something of value to offer, you know, to people. I haven't like got my nose bleeding in the trenches, you know, like learning and crafting and refining myself. It's like <laughs> I you know, I want to be rich next week. Yep. <laughs> you know, it's like like Pitching a story where, where, where you can get rich overnight is much more exciting or, you know, I see clients jumping on bright, shiny object bandwagons like mm-hmm. all day long. Mm-hmm. It's funny because cause like, 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 and forgive me if I'm taking off on a tangent here, no, but no, the, like, like, you know, the, the stuff that we talk about, it's boring yeah. um, as opposed to, you know, like when I'm working with clients, like they, you know, they buy into the pipe dream, you know, yeah. of, of being sold, you know, that's being sold everywhere. Like I got a client, 
his last business, um, he built from scratch to $600 million. That's pretty significant. Six hundred. I've never built a six hundred million dollar company. Um, so th- this guy, is, this guy, is, he's a smart guy, you know. And, and after working with him for you know, like like you know, two years, he, he said, he goes, Chris, you know, I'm really beginning to like to like realize that the stuff online, it's not as easy as it looks. You know, it's like <laughs> the message I hear is like it's easy, and I'm gonna, you know, we should, if we're not making like hundred million dollars within the first thirty days, we're losers. Um, <laughs> yep. and it's like, it's a message that, that, you know, I've been preaching to them all along and like, so clients will buy, they'll buy this pipe dream, yep. you know, it's being sold everywhere and instead of like approaching and working smartly on stuff. Yep. You know, it's funny because, uh, um, I have to spend their good money on convincing them of spending their good money uh, on, on helping them make money. You know, yep. it, it's like, and instead of like, you know, like them having buying into things and they're buying in the, the shiny stuff instead of this boring stuff. And then they, they insist on bright, shiny objects and false beliefs. And then they and then they fail and fail and fail until they're ready to listen by into you know better approach that can produce bigger returns. Yep. And 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 work on you know these, these things that, that that you know like 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 you, you recap so so eloquently. Mm. That's really you know like like help that'll help people. And the interesting thing is is that is that when you work on the boring stuff, um, you fast forward a year, two years from now. Yes. You will you will greatly outpace and out distance the guys that are they're just like going from like shiny object to shiny object. Yeah, yeah, wholeheartedly. And in fact, that's something that we should maybe. I know we're. I don't know. There's no real set time for these calls, so I mean, it's just about delivering value. And I want to make sure that we talk a little bit about kind of what you're doing these days. But I think this is a really important point because that's again, it's the same thing to take the same 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 example you're looking to run an ironman you're running to you're looking to swim two and a half miles cycle 112 and then jog 27 miles afterwards so what do you do you just you jog a little bit and then you just you wake up next day you try and jog a little bit further and the next day you try and jog a little bit further right obviously without killing yourself in training but it's the same thing in business i mean there's only three ways to grow a business that's to get more customers to sell more to those existing customers and to mm-hmm. sell more to them more frequently, get people to buy from you, get them to buy more often and get them to buy more when they do buy. And the thing is, is that there's just 101 different ways to do that. And it's every day waking up and just, just, again, just, just hammering that craft, you know, how are our sales, how are our refunds, how are you know testimonials, complaints and repeat in the different strategies and tactics, whatever tools you're looking to ap- apply or whoever strategy or whose approach or whose philosophy um, yeah, it's just about daily, 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 just drilling that in. And I know, I, yeah, it's just not the shiny object. That's what we want, right? The grass is always greener. We want to find the bigger, better, easier, shorter way, but there's just For nothing, sure. there's nothing, uh, just anyways, there's just nothing against, there's nothing wrong with the way people have been making money. That's the thing that I come across the most for me. People that want to do something new. No one's ever done this before. It's going to be amazing. And sometimes you're like, yeah, that's great. But also you have to also remember, was it the, the pioneers got the arrows, the settlers got the land, you know, and it's mm. that whole concept of just sell what people are already buying because I can come up and, you know, and we want new innovations and by all means follow those passions. But when you're looking to get a business up and running, it's just really easy to go into a market or if your business is already up and running to look at what your competitors are doing and at least just do that as a baseline to get cash flow coming through, right? Getting in and then and a model from. I I'm going on my own tangent now, but I just think that it's, again, it's just these, these get rich overnight. It's, it's not an overnight thing. It's, it's, there's a trapping of success too. And that's why I think it's important people choose to do something they love because even again, say world, like Olympic level, you go to the Olympics and you compete for any, any, anything, you're not going to like win or lose and then decide to take time off. Like, it's just, you're not, like, you're not going to go to the Olympics for ping pong, and then the day after the Olympics be like, oh, all right, I'm going to take up tennis now. Like, you mm-hmm. you just, you know, because habit is so ingrained in who we are and what we do in our lives, and that 24 hours, every morning, well, all we have is 24 hours, how we use that. And so if mm-hmm. that's, if that's the, that's the magic, the secret sauce is, is just waking up and using your 24 hours better and then having those habits. But then there's the trapping of that. And I think there's some people that purposefully, I know myself, sometimes I lay off the gas cause I'm almost afraid of becoming trapped into being someone, if that makes sense. If, mm-hmm. oh, if I do it and I sell a bunch of those, now I actually have to do this. Now I've got to fulfill on that. Oh, look at all the responsibility and pressure on me. But I think a lot of it is mindset and psychological fear. But if people are really looking to 
to you know to break through and grow their business i don't think i think i think we really gave them the formula today i mean in a few different ways and how to how to diagnose their problem apply the solution uh they know they can turn to yourself or myself if they have questions or anybody else to get help um and just really focusing on that on on those fundamentals mm-hmm. every day chris yep. um we're supposed to ask you about a book and a quote at some point in time along this call. <laughs> you got anything for our listeners? Um, so, uh, f- yeah, my favorite quote is it's uh, comes from Proverbs. Uh, it's like three, five, and six. Uh, Trust the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. Look to Him in all you do, and He'll direct your path. Because um, that's, that's kind of it's been like a guiding guiding light for me. Because it's like I like predictable, um, and um, pretty much every situation I've been put in has been unpredictable. Um, and, and, and learning to cope in uncertainty has, has been a, a real uh, a real challenge for me because, like, because like I said, I, I like I like predictable and I like to be in control. Mm-hmm. So learning how to function in, in uncertainty is, is, uh, uh, is has been a, a personal challenge that I've had to work with over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, f- favorite favorite book? Um, I don't you know. It's funny. I don't really have a favorite book. So so, so I, I'm going to give you a, a few. Well, actually, I do have one favorite book, and I'm going to give you like. Um, a few first before I get to my one favorite book. Sure. Um, uh, Why People Buy by Guy Baker is mm. absolutely fantastic for if anyone's doing actually any type of sales, whether it's online, especially if you're doing face-to-face sales. That That's just brilliant. Um, what, uh, and then another book is Sell Little Red Hen Sell by Jeffrey Hansler. Okay. And that um, so so smoothly, succinctly, and entertaining um, tells like um, the the emotional triggers of of, of like why people buy things, mm-hmm. um, and the the part on uh, when I read about like values based selling and it's not values the way we would traditionally define them. When I read that, it was like a whole new world opened up to me, and it's like that made it like really really helpful to like, go into any market and know um, uh, how to sell people stuff. Um, uh, Ogmandino, pretty much anything by him is just, mm, just such an awesome he's, storyteller. Yeah, he's such a good, yep. And then my all time favorite book is, is, uh, The Little Mouse, The Red Right Strategy, and The Big Hungry Bear. What? <laughs> the, the, the Little Mouse, The Red Right Strawberry, and The Big Hungry Bear. I've got four kids, uh, but my, my youngest is, uh, is a boy. He's, uh, three and a half. All four, all four kids. I've loved this book, and I absolutely love reading it. It's just, it's just so much fun. It's just, I, I, I think that's like probably my all-time favorite book. You got get nothing it. out of it except, except for entertainment. Oh, got <laughs> but, it, got uh, it. The Little yeah. Mouse, The Red Ripe Stripe, you got it up out here on Amazon, and The Big Hungry the big Bear. Hungry. <laughs> that's awesome. It's got a ton of reviews. People seem to really love it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and then the other ones were, was it, it was Why People Buy? Is that Guy Baker, or was it Paco yeah. Underhill? No, Guy Baker. Guy, uh, Guy Baker, B-A-K-B-R. why people buy. And then the other one was... Um, sell, Little Red Hen Sell. Sell, Little Red Hen Sell. And of course, anything by Og Mendingo. But, yeah, and Sell, Little Red Hen Sell is by Jeffrey Hansler, H-A-N-S-L-E-R. And then Og Mandino is kind of a strange name, O-G. And then last name, Mandino, M-A-N-D-I-N-O. Those are great. Yeah, those are great suggestions. I actually haven't read why why we buy. I'm gonna buy that right now. It's funny. Uh, my landlord came by and he was like, "You can't possibly be reading all these books, can you, Daryl?" Because I like every day I got something coming in for, and I'm like, "Hey, the book you don't own, you can't read, and the book you don't read can't help you." So I don't I don't necessarily get through them all top to bottom, but they're there, and I I, I crack all of them open, and I I give them each at least some of my time. So. Um, hey. And and, and Daryl, I, I you know I gotta say you can tell that that, that you're, you're a great student because it, it's it's um um you know I I am like more and more impressed with you know more and more I talk to you about about how uh, just like the depth of, of your knowledge you know and it's like like um and that you've acquired in, in you know rel- you know relatively short you know short period of time it's like you're so young and gosh it's like you you got you know so much wisdom already you know and it's like you know from our conversations you know it, it's it's easy to see why because it's you're you're reading a ton of stuff you, mm-hmm. you're you're associating with, with some some really smart people you're in some like some good mastermind groups um 
you know, and you're, you're constantly like testing and learning and applying stuff. It's, you know, it's like, uh, you're, you're, it's, it's, it's actually quite refreshing and very impressive. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I really, really, really appreciate that. That means a lot to me coming from you. Um, thank you. I, I do appreciate that. I have heard that from a couple other people. Um, all, all I can really say is just, it's just, it's focus without even necessarily intending to have focus, just trying to, just, I think just even as a kid, I remember, I remember I went to French immersion for grade seven and eight because, um, I remember sitting down looking at my report card in grade six and going like, all right, I got to stick with what I'm good at. And I went through everything and French was like the class I did better, which if anyone's from Canada, they're probably laughing because French is like, we call it like a bird course because often you just have to show up to get it. But I decided to specialize and do that. And I've done that all my whole life. I like, whenever I kind of look at something, all right, what have I been doing? What am I already good at? Let's just do more of that. Hey, all right, what have I been doing? What am I good at? Let's just do more than that. So I appreciate that. A lot of people have said I've accomplished a lot or, or I've learned a lot in a short period of time, but I don't, I don't know if I think I'm special at all. I just, it's, I don't know. It's just, yeah, it's, it, thank you. That's all I'm going to say. Thank you. And this, this podcast, having people like you here is my, my sincere attempt to share it with the world because I feel that in candid interviews like this, you can learn so much um, faster than just in reading in books. That's why I'm in masterminds. Having that mind share, being able to ask questions and get answers and, and deal with people who's in the know. I mean, I feel like that that's one of the most underutilized, one of the most powerful yet most underutilized tools of our age is the internet because in, 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 in all its capacity right now, let's say I'm facing a problem. I'm, I'm a runner and I've got some sort of issue. I can look up online. Who's the world's best like runner with like times and all that stuff. I can find out who their coach is and I can find them on Facebook and go ask them a question. I'm able from my home, wherever I am to reach out and access the world's leading experts in anything and just ask them a question. And a lot of people will answer, or people like me and you, or we're here actively trying to give it away just to help people. And I just think there's so many people that instead they're like watching Family Guy and playing video games and like things like that, which is okay to have that entertainment. Um, but I just, yeah, I, I don't, I, I just, I'm not special. I just like, like you, just like you, just had to figure out a way to make it work. And, you know, one of the best things you can do is just surround yourself with other people and just learn, 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 learn. You you do better when you know better. And I'm very verbose and rambling on and on. But thank you, Chris. I really appreciate your heartfelt, sincere words. So thank you. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. And by, by, by the way, it, it's like if, if anyone listening is, is uh, um, somewhat skeptical, but like like I am, this, this, this is like a, I was all unscripted. So so uh, oh, yeah. there, there's no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, the, so, um, you know, and, and just doing, yeah, and just doing more and more. See, and just last, last comment here, uh, was that, um, doesn't, because like someone's good at what they're doing, doesn't make them better. They're just, they're just more skilled in that area. And I think like the more, you know, people come to terms with it and more, I, you know, come to terms with the fact that, you know what, um, I am really good at what I do. Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's skills that were just like, just part of me naturally, and I just you know, worked on fostering them and growing them. But it doesn't make me more more valuable, more important than than, than anybody mm. else. Mm. I just got, I just got a different set of skills. Like the guy that's digging a ditch, it's it's honorable what he's doing. Yep. You no, know, it's 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 honorable work. You know, and, and, you know, guy that, that someone that doesn't understand marketing it doesn't make them bad or, or anything like that. It's right. like you know, maybe just maybe maybe just want to be the artist in their business, yep. um, and that's that's their giftness, and you know, and you know, and so it's just. You know, using you know, complementary skills, you know, to help people advance. That's all. Yeah. So. No, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And and just as, since we're on this bus, might as well keep the wheels turning. But the other thing is that, like, who's to say that you amass forty million dollars and I amass maybe just two million in my lifetime? Who's to say that one of us is going to be happier than the other? I mean, really, what makes you happy, I think, is being able to spend your life doing the things that you want to do. And if you want to build a big company. You know, we've got podcasts like this and experts like yourself uh, and myself who can help people, you know, and if that's too much for them, if they don't want to, then that's like, again, who's to say that one's right, one's wrong. Um, yep. That's exactly it. So, but in today's call, I really do uh, encourage people who've listened to this to, to listen to this call a couple of times and take note of anything. Cause again, like you said, it's almost kind of boring. I mean, once you know what works, it's just a matter of doing it. And, and that's, I think where we, I think, I don't know, I think that's part of where we fall short is when we 
have our successes multiple times in a row and then we you know we we let it get boring if that makes sense because when you're you know your mind starts to drift you're just doing routine formulaic stuff you know um sometimes the money the money starts to stops counting i remember when i was in tokyo i was making what i thought was phenomenal money at the time but after a while the monotony of what i was doing just became too much and uh Mm -hmm. so i moved on so um not to say that this is that that's why i think we like to do client work because it allows us to get involved in different projects and apply the same skills but just in different scenarios fresh faces fresh people fresh problems um so chris what are you working on now what are you really excited about you know, it, it's um, I've, I've been playing some some really big markets, and it's it's been a lot of fun. I've, I've worked, gosh, in um, I think it was, it was like seventy one different industries, but I think that was last count. I think it's probably like closer like about a hundred. Um, I've been playing with some really big markets and in things that I'm really interested in, which is like uh, uh, personal health um, uh, and um, uh, just just a, a, a lot of like like personal health, like like uh, healthy eating, longevity. Um, you know, like truth about uh, about um, truth about health, like different health products, and and, and how you know how to live, uh, um, you know, dieting for 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 longer life. And I don't believe in dieting, but just like lifestyle. Right. So, like I said, I've got four kids. I, you know, I want to uh, I want to live uh, you know live longer and you know see them. Um, just so so things that like with like just um, uh, you know, not making a quick buck projects, but but things that that have lasting impact. On, you know, on people, um, you know, wh- whether it's helping them with uh, financial situations, you know, leaving, um, leaving legacies and priorities to, to people behind them, and uh, you know, and, and helping helping people um, have relief, you know, over whether it's like physical pain or emotional financial, um, like b- being in, in those markets have just been uh, uh, really uh, really personally gratifying. Good, good. Yeah, that's awesome. And you know what? I actually want to take something back. We we said it earlier, and I don't know if this is going to upset people or not, um, but it is what it is, and it's how I feel strongly this way. When we talked about that, you know, the ditch digger isn't a better or worse person than the guy who's, you know, in a whatever, in a, in a beat-up car versus the guy who's in a Mercedes, and same thing with whatever you focus on in your day. I, I agree with that, but one thing that I do agree is I think there is differences in people, and the guy who's just trying to get by and do as little as possible versus the person who's giving their life everything, that's giving it their all. And I think that it's very, I think the two highest, levels that a man as a man at least that you can attain to is one to be i think as a woman as well to to be at like the top tier in your industry of your craft and what you do and just be well accomplished and then the second thing is to raise a happy healthy uh joyful family and i think that that's you know those are really the two things is to to be the best at what you do whatever it is that you do and to constantly strive to push the envelope for that further and just to really kind of leave a legacy and to, to take care of your family and your friends and create a healthy, happy home and community atmosphere. So, um, yep. I think I'm really adamant about that. Um, but that's, that's super exciting. Chris, people want to get in touch with you. What's the next step? Um, they, they can, uh, um, they can always uh, like come by my, uh, my website and I don't know if there's going to be a, a link for it or not, but, but i um, I, I, it's uh, Chris Goegan. G O E G A N, uh, ChrisGoegan dot com, and there, there are a couple things on there. There's um, if they go to forward slash win, or there's a tab on there. There's a place where they can get like a, uh, you know, we can just have a free free consultation, just a free chat. Really is what it is. Hmm. Um, talk about their you know their situation and um, and then um, and some things that possibly help them. The other thing is is uh, got uh, a special report um, at you know, chrisgleegan.com forward slash special dash report, um, or it just helps just a lot of things that I've come across. It just, uh, um, gives, gives clarity and wisdom and insight on a lot of common problems and issues and, and, uh, and solutions, um, from the trenches got uh, it. on things. Got it, got um, the thing, you know, the other thing is that they can always reach out and email me, chris at chrisgleegan.com. Sure. Um, Good. So we've got Chris, C-H-R-I-S-G-O-E-G-A-N.com with a special yep. report just with his tools, tips, strategies, and tactics in it. And that's at chrisgoegan.com slash special report, special dash report. Um, or you can email Chris at, is it Goegan or Chris at Chris Goegan? Yeah, Chris at chrisgoegan.com. Got it. There we go. So there we go. Chris, 
Um, thank you for sharing. There is no, there's, I'm, you know, like I said before, these aren't scripted. There's no real benefit for you other than just being able to plug, you know, your website at the end. Uh, I really do value and appreciate your time and sharing with the listeners. Um, you know, we'll never really know the impact we have had or haven't had. And so I just appreciate you, uh, coming on here, sharing your time and your wisdom with us. And just also for, thank you for helping me and being a friend. That's just, um, yeah, very, uh, it's not commendable, but it's just, it's appreciated. Thank you. Well, 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 thank you, Daryl, and yeah, thank you for allowing me to uh, to, to help. It's, uh, it's a great resource that you're providing. Mm, thank you. Awesome. You've reached the end of our interview. Now, first, let me thank you for listening. I appreciate and respect you more than you'll ever know. And now I'd like to ask you a couple of questions. First, what three lessons did you just learn? What three aha moments just jumped out at you? Second, What can you implement for yourself and your business in the next 24 hours? Third, what can you give to someone else to help you with or give them to just do it for you? Whatever it is, remember taking action is the secret sauce to results. Now, if you think this interview would be helpful for a friend, please give them a link to it. It'll help them and it'll help me too. I'd also like to invite you to help me find out more about the challenges you're facing, your dreams, your goals, and how I can help you overcome what's holding you back. We both do better when we know better, and your success is my success, so please reach out and interact. You can visit our website, bestbusinesscoach.ca for Canada or California, where I'm from and where I'm living. Uh, You're welcome to also try out one of our paid programs. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and pretty much every other social media channel you can think of. You should also subscribe to the podcast, and if you're enjoying them, please leave us a nice review. It really helps. That's all for now. Once again, thank you. Take care of yourself, and remember, the world needs the best business you can build. And I believe in you.